Welcome everyone, my name is Zoltan Varga. I'm a senior research fellow at the Research Center for Natural Sciences in Budapest, Hungary. And in this presentation, I would like to give you an introduction to metrology and its application to EV research. The process of experimentally determining a quantity of an object is called a measurement. Metrology is the science of measurements. It covers three main areas, namely the definition of units, the realization of standards and providing traceability between measurement results. Let me give you an example. Gauge blocks are used to calibrate micrometer screws. These gauge blocks are small metal pieces with calibrated dimensions. This calibration is performed by optical interferometry, which uses lasers. This provides the connection to the definition of meter, because meter is defined based on the speed of light, and that is realized at the primary level in terms of the wavelengths of an iodine-stabilized helium neon laser. In the first part of this talk, I will give you the basic definitions uh, important in metrology and will explain how different levels of laboratories are connected through traceability and calibrations. The foundation of metrology is the International System of Units or SI. SI defines the seven base units for the seven base quantities which are the time, length, mass, electric current, thermodynamic temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Until 2019, these units were based on etalons. From 2019, these units are defined based on physical constants. For example, as I mentioned already, meter is defined based on the speed of light. Another example is the kilogram which is defined based on the Planck's constant. National Metrology Institutes maintain standards to provide traceability to the definition of base units. A standard or etalon is an object, system or an experiment with a defined relationship to a unit of measurement of a physical quantity. Another important concept in metrology is the uncertainty, which is the value associated with the measurement, which expresses the spread of possible values associated with the measurement. Here is a graphical explanation for the uncertainty. On the horizontal axis, we have the possible values of a measurement, and when we perform an experiment, we get a measured value. The uncertainty range is defined around this measured value, and it is an estimate of the range within which the true value is expected to lie with a given probability, for example, 95 or 99%. The error is defined as the difference between the true value and the measured value. When we perform a measurement, accuracy and precision are important parameters. For repeated measurements, we will get values which will scatter due to random and systematic errors. So we will obtain a distribution of measured values. Precision is defined as the width of this distribution. Accuracy tells us how far of the mean value of the measured values is from the reference value. On the right, you can see a graphical representation of these two properties. On the y-axis, we have accuracy, and on the x-axis, we have precision. In case of low accuracy and low precision, the result of independent measurements will show high variation. In case of high accuracy but low precision, the data points will scatter around the reference value. In case of low accuracy and high precision, the data points will show small variations, but their mean value will show a significant deviation from the reference value. In the ideal case, when we have high accuracy and high precision, the data points will show also small variations, and they will be centered around the reference value. In the following, I will give the definitions of traceability and calibration, which connects laboratories at different levels. Traceability 
is an unbroken chain of comparisons, all having stated uncertainties. This ensures that the measurement result or the value of a standard is related to references at the higher levels ending at the primary standard. Whereas calibration is defined as an operation that establishes a relation between measurement standard with a known measurement uncertainty and the device that is being evaluated, for example, conversion from arbitrary units to standard units, which is very important in the EV field. Finally, I would like to introduce the term primary method, which can be used to produce reference materials. A primary method of measurement is a method having the highest metrological properties, whose operation can be completely described and understood, for which a complete uncertainty statement can be written down in terms of SI units. A special group of methods are called primary direct methods, which measure the value of an unknown without reference to a standard of the same quantity. Let me give you an example for a primary method. For the size characterization of nanoparticles, small angular X-ray scattering or SACS can be used. In case of SACS, a monochromatic X-ray beam hits the nanoparticle sample which is in solution and from the scattering pattern the size of the nanoparticles can be determined with stated uncertainty. On the right you can see a photo of a SACS beam line at PTB, the German Metrology Institute. The last term I would like to introduce is the reference material. A reference material is homogeneous and stable with respect to one or more properties and established for a given measurement. From this definition, you can already see that this is a generic term or umbrella term. Different levels of reference materials exist. For example, there are certified reference materials or CRMs. These CRMs are certified with a metrologically valid procedure. The certificate contains the value of the specified property with an associated uncertainty. So CRMs represent the highest levels of reference material. In the next slides, I would like to give you an example for a traceability chain for the size determination of EVs. On the first level of the traceability chain, we have nanoparticle CRMs. These are produced in metrology institutes, usually using primary methods such as atomic spores, microscopy, or the already introduced small angular X-ray scattering. Here are two examples for a nanoparticle CRM. The left one is a gold nanoparticle standard with 10 nanometer di diameter. The right one is a certificate of a silica-based nanoparticle standard. This certificate contains the reference values with uncertainties determined by different methods. On the next level, we have the secondary reference materials. These are usually produced in refer reference laboratories using secondary methods such as electron microscopy or disk centrifugation. I should mention here that the categorization of methods not only depends on the measurement principle, but also how precisely the measurement is performed. For example, electron microscopy can be a primary method if the measurement is carried out in a metrologically valid procedure. An example for a secondary reference material is shown here. This is the product data sheet of polystyrene particles. This data sheet contains information about the calibrant which was used to determine the reference value of the size of these particles and also the measurement technique is described here which was used during the calibration. On the next level we have the unknown sample, for example EVs. These measurements are performed in research or medical laboratories, usually using secondary and laboratory methods. One example for this uh, laboratory method is resistive pulse sensing, which is based on the Coulter principle. In case of RPS, particles are passing through a nanoconstriction and cause an electric signal, a pulse, which is proportional to the volume excluded by the particles. 
So to calibrate the pass height to diameter, secondary reference materials made of polystyrene are usually used. The reference materials can serve different purposes. In my previous example, I've shown you an example of how reference materials can be used for calibration. So from converting the measurement results from arbitrary units to standard units. Another purpose could be validation, which means the assessment of the sensitivity and specificity of the measurement. Another purpose could be uh, quality control of an instrument or a measurement assay, which means the assessment of repeatability and reproducibility over time. It is very important that different purposes may require different qualities. For example, a certified reference material is not needed for a daily quality control, but calibration of an instrument can only be carried out with a certified reference material or a secondary reference material. So far, I was talking about reference materials, which are standards in terms of objects. Now I would like to talk about measurement standards. The International Organization for Standards, or ISO in short, is producing such measurement standards. ISO has developed almost 25,000 international standards so far. There are many examples which are relevant for EVs. For example, there is a standard about nanotechnologies which contains the terms and definitions for nano objects. There is a standard guidance on reference materials and there is also a guidance for the in-house preparation of quality control materials. There are standards for the size analysis of nanoparticles by small and Greek size scattering and there is also another standard uh, for the size analysis by particle tracking analysis which is commercially known as nanoparticle tracking analysis. Since NTA is widely used in the EV field, on this slide I would like to give you a summary about the content of ISO standards based on the example of the standard on the NTA method. So the standard starts with the terms and definitions and contains the description of the measurement principles. The main part of the standard is the description of the procedures which contains the sample preparation, the instrument setup, the measurement and also the evaluation. There is a separate section for system qualification and quality controls. There is a detailed description about data recording and the standard also contains a test report which describes the necessary information that should be reported together with the measurement results. In the last part of this presentation, I would like to give you an overview on the current state of the art in the field of reference materials for EVs. As a reminder, reference materials are homogeneous and stable materials with respect to the property in concern. In case of EVs, these properties include size and concentration of the EVs. As I've shown you, several certified reference materials are available for the size characterization of nanoparticles but such CRMs for the concentration measurement of nanoparticles has not yet been developed. That is already a bottleneck in the field. A very important point is that the applicability of reference materials for EV measurements depends on the working principle of the method. I give you two examples uh, for this lecture. Uh, First example is the measurement of the EV size by resistive pulse sensing using polystyrene particles to calibrate the RPS measurement. This is applicable because the pulse height in case of RPS depends on the particle volume which is defined for the polystyrene particles. My second example is the flow cytometry analysis of EVs using uh, polystyrene reference particles to obtain the diameter of the of the vesicles. This is not directly applicable because uh, in case of flow cytometry the light scattering depends on many 
parameters including the particle diameter, the refractive index, and the shape. Polystyrene particles and EVs differ in refractive index, and the refractive index of uh, the polystyrene particle standard is not traceably characterized. The development of certified reference materials for EVs is hampered by the lack of primary methods that can measure the EVs traceably. So this is still an active research field. There are commercially available EV reference materials, such as viruses, liposome, cell-derived EVs. It should be mentioned here that the reference material is an umbrella term. So in this respect, viruses, liposomes, and cell-derived EVs are quality control materials for EV measurements, but these cannot be used to calibrate uh, measurements. Synthetic nanoparticles can be used for calibration of the size measurement of EVs, as I explained in my previous. To wrap up, here are some take-home messages of this presentation. Always calibrate and validate your instrument and measurement assay. Perform quality control measurements frequently and follow the guidelines and different standards for the implementation and reporting on, of various measurements. Try to avoid reporting measurement results based on a single measurement. Characterize the precision and accuracy of your measurement method. And don't use reference materials without checking its applicability for the specific measurement. Here are the references for these presentations. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention.